So the question of neuroinflammation is, is interesting because there's been some conflict between the United States criteria for chronic fatigue syndrome and uh, other criteria using ME because of the term um, encephalomyelitis. Um, because technically, itis means inflammation, and we didn't really have strong uh, evidence of neuroinflammation earlier. But in the last uh, year or two, there have been very promising studies published showing the presence of neuroinflammation, PET scan, MRI scans. They are small but high-quality studies. They still need to be replicated, but I think that they are providing evidence that neuroinflammation is present in ME. So knowing which part of the nervous system is affected is a challenge when we lack the objective markers. But the studies showing neuroinflammation point to white matter disease um, for the site of, neuro of uh, neuroinflammation. We do know, though, that pa our patients may have uh, involvement of the peripheral nervous system in terms of autoantibodies. And so the interplay of the peripheral and the central nervous system uh, make a complex cycle that may be difficult to tease apart. Knowing if neuroinflammation is the cause or the consequence of ME is going to be a challenge. I'm not sure we understand that uh, at this point. We do think there may be genetic predisposition or infectious triggers or viral triggers, mechanical injury, exposures, and other kinds of factors that lead to neuroinflammation. So it doesn't arise probably from nothing. And as I said earlier, it's also possible that the peripheral nervous system uh, becomes dysfunctional. Even the example of small fiber polyneuropathy, if those damaged nerves out at the very periphery of the skin are sending abnormal signals to the brain, it may set up a sequence of changes in the brain uh, that uh, create change. So we have many, many questions to answer about the interplay of the peripheral and the central nervous system along with the, um, with the, uh, with autoimmunity in the periphery and neuroimmune mechanisms in the brain. We don't really have uh, treatments for neuroinflammation in ME at this point, particularly not treatments that are proven or tested. We may be able to borrow medications from other conditions of neuroimmune mechanisms, uh, but that remains to be seen. There is one interesting treatment that is, uh, has some published studies, and that's the use of naltrexone, or very low-dose naltrexone, uh, which might be modulating glial cell inflammation in a way that is uh, treating at least a part of neuroinflammation, maybe the part more related to pain amplification. So there's been some interest in the use of antivirals in MECFS, and the relationship of this to neuroinflammation is not immediately clear. Um, if there is persistent or re, uh, reactivating herpes virus, herpes family virus infection, then the, the use of antivirals may be, uh, may be very effective to uh, prevent that or to really decrease the activity of the virus, which might be triggering um, continuing neuroinflammation. But there are many patients with ME that don't respond to antivirals. And the response to antivirals is exceedingly slow in most cases. And many patients relapse when the antiviral medications are stopped. So while we are interested in trying to uh, understand why it works and to use any treatment that might be helpful for people, at this point it has limited benefit. And many of the antivirals are very expensive and bring some toxicities. So I think it's important that we understand what we're treating and, and get the clinical trials done to know in what situation the antivirals would play the most important role. 
drugs like uh, immune modulators like uh, rituximab work in a different way directly on immune cells uh, that are either playing a role themselves or are producing antibodies, autoantibodies that may be playing a role. So then if patients get better with an immune modulator but not an antiviral, then how do we um, live with the idea that there's a chronic activating viral inf infection that's driving illness? So these are very important questions to pursue. And it may have something to do with stage of illness. Um, that early stage illness is really different from medium and from uh, late stage illness. Heeft u een vraag naar aanleiding van deze video? Reageer op YouTube, tweet naar het MECVS Vereniging of mail naar www.me-cvsvereniging.nl. Uw vragen worden zoveel mogelijk behandeld in de chatsessies.